Welcome to Mount Sac Athletic Central. My name is Brooke Barber, and I'm here with Robert and Nick, and today we'll be going over our NFL mock draft that will be happening April 30th, and today the boys will be going over their picks. All right, so at number one overall, I have Jameis Winston going to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers simply because he's the most pro-ready quarterback who can start day one in Tampa and make a difference. And at number two, Tennessee, I have them drafting the best overall defensive prospect in the draft, which is Leonard Williams out of uh, Southern California. You put him at defensive end, put him at nose tackle, put him wherever you want to generate plays for the Titans. And at uh, number three, Jacksonville, I have them taking Dante Fowler, that he's just a physical specimen out there, an outside linebacker, and will fit perfectly in the, their new 3-4 defense. So picking him early will seal that uh, position. And at four, the Raiders, I have them drafting Amari Cooper, he is the, he's just the best route runner in the, uh, in the draft. He has the best hands. He makes everything look so, so smooth and simple, and he's going to be a great asset for uh, Derek Carr, the Raiders' new uh, franchise quarterback. And at five, I see them, if they do keep this pick, I can see them trading back to possibly the uh, Chicago Bears who to trade up over the New York Jets to grab Mariota. But if Washington does make their pick, I see them drafting Vic Beasley. Uh, in order to replace uh, Brian Arakpo, who left to uh, Tennessee in a uh, free agency. Uh, those are those are all great picks. A uh, big key pick is right here, uh, the New York Jets getting Marcus Mariota. Uh, he has him down at the six, but I think he's going to be more somewhere up here, you know, in the top four maybe. Maybe not four, maybe top three. Uh, Marcus Mariota, very quiet, but can play the game of football. This guy has the greatest eyes, greatest speed, just, has, just knows the game so well. Uh, if you and if you watch uh, Gruden's camp with Marcus Mariota, you see uh, he right away he's just learning the offense that the Gruden wanted him to do in the camp, just right right there. This guy can learn so quickly that I think when he gets to New York, I think he'll fit right in perfectly with the Jets. Although I think if the Eagles, wherever they are in the draft, if they were maybe up lower, what are they? 20, a twenty, the twenty pick. If they were probably up here in the top ten. I guarantee you Chip Kelly would probably want his quarterback back, especially since he already knows Chip Kelly's offense. But because they're down here, we got Mariota probably going to the Jets, maybe even a little bit higher, maybe maybe going to Jacksonville. But, you know, I like him in New York, you know, the kind of style of offense they're running nowadays. You know, Mariota would fit in perfectly. But if Mariota isn't there at six, I can see them drafting Kevin White, the receiver out of West Virginia. He's also one of those physical specimens. He's huge, and he runs in a 4-3 range, so he's fast. So, uh, I mean, if that receiving core, Kevin White, Brandon Marshall, and Eric Decker, you know, Smith has no more excuses. And at seven, if they don't trade with uh, Washington, I see them grabbing Danny Shelton with that new coach, John Fox. He's running a 3-4, and Danny Shelton fits perfectly in that team. At seven, or at eight, I'm sorry, I see Shane Ray getting drafted by the Atlanta Falcons because uh, pass rush is their most dire need in the draft, and they can address that with Shane Ray, right? That is a great pick. Actually, uh, I was unfortunate to see him leave early in that SEC title game. You know, he's such a dominant player. That guy is just all over the field. I mean, all quarterbacks should be afraid when he's on the field. <laughs> and uh, uh, someone to protect those quarterbacks is uh, at number nine, Brandon Sharif, going to the New York Giants. He, uh, he's so versatile in everything that he does. He can play tackle. He can play guard. I think his best, best position would be at guard, but... With the uh, New York Giants seeing what the Dallas Cowboys were able to do these past few years, uh, building through the draft with their offensive line, I think they're going to take a, a page out of their playbook. But at number 10, St. Louis, they've, they've been needing uh, an outside threat at receiver for, for years now. And uh, last year, or a few years back, they got uh, Tavon Austin. And now I think they're going to grab uh, Devontae Parker to help them out uh, in their receiving core on the outside. And at 11, the Minnesota Vikings, I see them grabbing Trey Waynes, the cornerback. He's... A great press man coverage corner. He he can run with the NFL receivers, the elite ones. I even think from uh, from the start of the season. And at 12, this might be a little bit of a reach for uh, for Jalen Strong. He's one of the bigger receivers in the draft. Uh, he can run. He has a straight line speed to get down the field, and he high points balls very easily. He's he's gonna be a really good player. Has some ba uh, basketball background, so he's good. And at 13, I see the Saints grabbing Randy Gregory, the uh, outside linebacker from Nebraska. He has top five uh, potential, but he uh, got in trouble with, uh, you know, he got caught with weed, didn't, uh, didn't pass a drug test at the combine, so I think he'll slip a little bit, but he'll still be a, a top 15 pick. Yeah, uh, my pick at number 14, I picked Nelson Aguilar. I mean, originally, I wanted Jalen Strong to go to Miami. I am a huge Miami fan, 
But if Cleveland does happen to get Jalen Strong, I think the next best pick for Miami would be Aguilar. See, Miami has a great defense. Their offensive line, yeah, it's a little bit struggles. But, I mean, Tannehill can't do much without a, a good wide receiver core. And I think Aguilar or Strong, maybe even Brashad Perryman, if, he, if they're lucky, they, they, could do, uh, they could do very well with uh, Aguilar. Aguilar, 2012, 2013, 2014, he progressed every single year at USC. He started out his career with only 18 receptions, finished his career with 104 receptions in 2014. He, uh, he got 1,313 yards in his senior year. I mean, that, that's, that's crazy. I mean, this guy was not just dominant as a receiver, but as on the kick return. This guy in his sophomore and junior year was, had two kickoff returns in big games, which pretty much led to USC's great season. I mean, granted, they didn't go to the national title, but hey, without Nas Nelson Aguilar, I don't think USC would have been the same exact team. They're a very explosive playmaker with the ball in his hand. And uh, at 15, I see a San Francisco grabbing uh, Eric Armstead. He's huge, to, to say it simply. He's 6'7", 330, and he can actually move. He has some athletic traits to him. So uh, they, they, have a, they have a good defensive line uh, uh, coach over there. If, if they coach this guy, he might be a, an all-pro. At, at 16, I have the Houston Texans grabbing Lyle Collins, the offense lineman from LSU, simply because they like to pound the rock over there. And he's a great run-blocking uh, offensive lineman. He, along with Brandon Sharif, might be able to kick inside the guard, but he can play tackle in this league for sure. At 17, I have uh, San Diego addressing their running back need with Todd Gurley. I mean, he is a top 10 pick, but there are some ACL concerns. He, he cleared medically throughout the combine and everything, but some teams still might have that doubt in, his, in their mind. I think for a lot of teams, this will be a tough pick, as you said, with the ACL. I mean, if someone does draft him, it's going to be tough for him to start right away. You know, he's going to be coming back. So I think they're going to be very hesitant, but I think he will be worth it in the long run. Yeah, I agree. He's one of the better running back prospects since Adrian Peterson, really. Yeah. And at 18, uh, the Kansas City Chiefs, they lost Rodney Hudson through free agency this year. So I see them just picking up where they left off, drafting uh, Cameron Irving from Florida State, just inserting him to the starting lineup right there. Uh, if they hadn't have signed Jeremy Macklin through a free agency, I would have seen them drafting a receiver, but since they got him, filling another need right there. And at Cleveland, uh, uh, 19, the Cleveland Browns, their pick from Buffalo, I see them drafting uh, a new toy for the Browns' uh, defense in Bud Dupree. He's one of the, the premier athletes in this draft. He's big, fast, physical, and strong. But the only reason he falls to this uh, position is because he, he plays kind of that hybrid role where he's going to need some coaching. But if he does get coached up well, he could turn into a Pro Bowl player. And at 20, uh, like Nick said, if, if they somehow, I could see them trading up for Mariota just to get Chip Kelly's toy back. But if they stay here, I see them drafting Landon Collins, the, uh, the consensus top safety in the, in the, in the draft from Alabama. He will, he'll immediately help the uh, Eagles uh, secondary immediately day one. And at 21, Cincinnati, I see them also addressing their secondary with Jalen Collins, the cornerback from LSU. He's also one of those bigger corners who can play press coverage and shut down the NFL-sized uh, athletes at receiver. At, at 22, I also see cornerback being, being the trend with Pittsburgh drafting Marcus Peters. He also is one of the uh, top prospects who could be a top 10 pick, but uh, character concerns plague him. He was actually kicked off, the, dismissed the, the, from the Washington team, but with a respected franchise like Pittsburgh and Mike Tomlin being there, I think they could corral his, uh, his character, and he'd be a great pick for them. At, at 23, Detroit, they're known for having one of the better D-lines in the league, but last or this offseason they lost Ndamukong Sue to the Dolphins and uh, Nick Fairley to the Rams. So I see them getting uh, Malcolm Brown right there, inserting him to where Nick Fairley was playing and not missing too much of a beat right there. And at 24, the second running back taken in the first round was going to be Melvin Gordon from Arizona or from uh, Wisconsin. He's going to be going to Arizona simply because they need help at the position. And at 24, it's a, it's a great value pick for them. At 25, I see Carolina going with TJ Clemmings, the offensive lineman from Pitt, because last year Cam was running for his life. As, as good of an athlete as he is, there's also great athletes on the defensive line, so he needs help with the protection. I can also see them going receiver here, but I think they're going to go uh, This is a very deep receiver class this year, so I see them addressing the offensive line right there at 25. And at 26, uh, I see Baltimore going with Eddie Goldman, the defensive tackle from Florida State, because they're, they, they need to replace Ndamuk, or, I'm sorry, not Ndamuk, Su, Alodi Nada on their 3-4 line, and he's perfect for that. He's a run-stopping uh, defensive tackle. 
And uh, he's not as much of a pass rusher, but they need him to stop the run. And at 27, the Cowboys, they would love to have either Melvin Gordon or uh, Todd Gurley fall to them, but fortunately they're pick, pick before, and they're going to address the need at cornerback with Kevin Johnson from Wake Forest. He might be the best ball hawk uh, at corner in the, in the, in the draft. He, he knows how to high points balls. He catches the ball really, really smoothly, and he's a great man coverage corner, so he's going to help them immediately. And at 28, uh, Denver, I see them drafting Jake Fisher, the offensive tackle from Oregon. Uh, with Gary Kubiak coming in, he, he's going to bring in a, a zone blocking scheme, and Jake Fisher is perfect for that. That's actually a good pick right there for Denver. You know, he's coming from the Oregon offense where they do have a fast-paced offense. So being on that offensive line, uh, um, on that line, you know, he, he's definitely going to help out uh, Manning out there. You know, get, being so quick and agile, he'll be able to uh, stop the pass rush yeah. and also protect the line on run, run, run plays. Right, he's, he's good. Speaking of run plays, 29, I see the Colts going with uh, Eric Flowers, who is, was a dominant run blocker in a college at Miami. And they, Indianapolis really likes to pound the rock. And I see that being the perfect marriage over there in Indy. And at 30, uh, Green Bay, I see them drafting Eric Kendricks, the linebacker from UCLA. He is one of the nation's uh, leading tacklers this year. He loves to fly around and make tackles and make plays. And at 30, after losing A.J. Hawk this year, I see the Packers grabbing him in the first round. At 31, the New Orleans Saints from their pick with Seattle, I, per I see them replacing uh, their Jimmy Graham loss with Rashad Perryman. Uh, he's just a great down-the-field threat. He, has, he dazzled scouts with a 4-2-5-40 at his pro day. He's big. He can catch the ball. He's a good replacement for that. This guy is very explosive. This guy come out of nowhere. You know, it, when you think you got him blocked, all of a sudden you'll make some kind of cut, and it'll be wide open. I don't know if anybody saw that uh, game against UCF with you on UCF where they got the Hail Mary pass. This guy was covered by like four or five guys. Out of nowhere, he comes up with a game-winning catch, probably one of the most exciting plays I saw all season. This guy can make plays. This guy, like he said, has the height, has the hands, has the quickness. This guy will make plays for New Orleans, and especially with the way that uh, Drew Brees likes to run his offense and the way he, he likes to play, this guy will be a great compliment for him. One of the best down-the-field throwers in the league right now is Drew Brees, and with that type of speed and height, he's instantly going to be a playmaker. And with the last and final pick of the first round, the pick everyone wants because 32 is a Super Bowl winning team, I see the Patriots ad uh, addressing their need at cornerback because they did lose Darrell Revis and they did lose Brandon Browner in the offseason. So they'll insert this kid, Byron Jones, the, uh, the combine phenom. He broke a, actually broke a Guinness World Book record uh, when the broad jump, jumping over 12 feet from a standstill. So this kid is explosive, he's fast, he can cover, he can hit. He's a perfect marriage over there in, in New England. All right, so that is our mock draft here at the uh, Mount Sac Athletic Central. Uh, we, we, see a, we see some receivers going here, see some outside linebackers. Over in, this is the first draft that's going to have uh, two running backs selected in the first round since, uh, I want to say, 2012. So can't wait. It's going to be interesting to see on Thursday. Yeah. Thanks. Well, thanks for joining us, guys. Join us next week as we update more on sports. Have a nice day.